Hey guys, it's Martin Cliff here again, and this is part two of my exploration of the pentatonic and how we apply it uh, in a musical context. <laughs> So we're continuing our look on blues and we're still in A because we're going to use the same loop as we used in the last video. Um, but we're going to look at some notes that maybe don't fit directly into the pentatonic uh, scale but fit in with that whole pattern. So rather than just taking some notes from our A minor pentatonic scale, if we look at um, adding in just the odd one or two notes, it, we might add the second. Um, we might add that sharp and seventh because that sounds kind of kind of bluesy. Uh, we might add a sixth. Four, depending on which scale we're looking at. Uh, a lot of blues is you would think Aeolian mode, um, if you don't know what Aeolian mode is, don't worry. Um, but a lot of it has more of a Dorian sound to it. They're just two different kind of scales. Um, yeah, a scale is just a sequence of notes on the fingerboard, for a guitar's perspective. And these are what we call passing notes, sometimes they're referred to as blue notes. Another one we might use, even though we're in a minor, is the major third. So all of a sudden we've gone from six notes to choose from to which is nine or possibly even ten um, and you'll choose different ones depending on which little thing you play so one of the most common things to do is to take that minor third and either bend that up or slide it up one fret before we play the fourth. It could be um, we could also take our little sick now. And that was again was our second. So all the time we're looking at little notes that aren't quite right, aren't quite in the scale, but they sound like they fit, and a lot of it's to do with taste. And different blues players will use different combinations of notes. Um, different musicians generally, this is not just about blues, this applies to all sorts of things. Uh, in the next video we're going to look at a progression that isn't a blues pattern at all, um, but how we apply the pentatonic to that. So if we're if we're doing that then we're using it could be one just little things that, that add a bit more melodic interest to us. Let's stick the backing track on and try and apply some of these. certain of those notes worked better over certain chords than others and in that context I actually ended up using the, the sharp and sixth, the major sixth, 
more than I did the minor because it seemed to fit with that particular chord pattern, which you wouldn't think it would. So we've now got... So we've basically got four semitones in a row there. Which is great if you want to play a little, little run. So, don't think about it necessarily as which note shall I play. Think about it as in, if I play a wrong note, I'm probably only a fret away from a right note, and I'm just taking this pentatonic idea, which has been around for donkey's years, many, you know, hundreds of years, Early music used a lot of pentatonic stuff. And we're just taking this minor pentatonic, we're adding in some notes from more conventional diatonic harmony, and then a couple of notes that are slightly outside that, and, and applying that within. So, now in an A minor chord, you would never think of playing a major six because an F sharp is not in the A minor scale. Whether you're playing... Whatever minor scale you're playing, there is no F sharp in it. But in this context, in a pentatonic, in a bluesy context, where we're always kind of hovering between minor and major, and obviously there is an F sharp in... in an A major scale, um, we're kind of trying to be a bit ambivalent about our tonality and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes you can even not quite hit the note and it sounds good. Uh, a lot of, a very common trick to do is just to take that. So just that third, uh, the minor third, and just bend it slightly sharp, not all the way to that. But halfway. So where the way I play a lot of the times, I, a lot of what I play is pentatonic bass, but I'm just taking these little ideas and again I'm bending there from a second to an almost third, but I can bend a little bit further and get so it sounds immediately more bluesy. Then. is probably going to be a major chord so that's definitely a point where we can get that sharp and seventh in. So just little things to think about. Um, again this is part two of a series of ideas of how we can use this pentatonic approach. Uh, I'm just going to play out, hopefully try and use some of these ideas again. Just using the same loop, uh, it'll be a new loop in the next video, uh, but I hope this has been useful. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, uh, and I'll see you next time.